okay uh, I will start defining our first entity which is models so inside our entities for folder just create users dot entity dot typescript uh, you don't know you don't need to put this dot entity I just like to put these uh, these are something uh, I saw in angular so they put the type of this file between the file name and the extension like this so in type of to define a model hopefully I have the documentation um, let me show you so what is an entity so when you define a model you will just create a normal class and not put a normal property so id is a number first name is a string last name is string uh, is active boolean and you need to decorate each property so type rm will know that you want this property to be a column in this table so the class itself will be decorated to with the entity table with the entity decorator so this is a table and each column will be decorated with these uh, type of decorators the column which every one of these accepts uh, an object that makes it more uh, customizable and this primary generated column will create uh, an auto generated column the id so I can just create one for the user so yeah I will import from type rm the um, column the entity the primary generated column now export class users entity and I will decorate this with the entity uh, the creator these are basically functions by the way but you call them in a different way like this and uh, they accept the whole thing so they accept the whole class as an argument uh, and it sorry it will be passed to that creator we can also pass to it these options so one of them is the name so I will call it users and by default um, the table name will be the same name of the entity uh, followed by entity I think yeah I think if you added entity to the table name it won't put it again but this is basically the how they will name your uh, tables and they will be lower cast uh, with all the things with all the names concanit camel cast so exactly this will be like this this is the default name for this table uh, which I don't like so this is how you can override that name okay so I have the column which is ID this is the auto implemented column the primary key I will have the first name type string and this is also a column So and this is also be named so sorry yeah each property will be the same uh, exact way in the table so this would be called first name like this uh, camel cast so I like them to be the snake cast for inside for the database so you can override this so name will be first underscore name and you can also pass an options like there's a lot of them and I will be using for now the nullable so I'll put nullable to false by default it's true so each column you define will be uh, will accept null for a uh, value for a value another column is the last name type string also I'll override, override the name so last name nullable to true false sorry the default is true and I'll define another column birth of that of type that so name would be birth of so birth of that so type rm by default will take this type I believe or the type of the property and create a column that represents that type so string will be varchar in the database 
You can also be implicit about it, so type string like this. Uh, yeah, you can, this is an option as well. And this will work also for the dead. Um, yeah. But for the nullable, I believe it's a good option to be also implicit about it. So by default, it's true, but so put it and type it. Uh, it will tell other developers that you wanted this to be true. You, you just did not forget about it. So sometimes it's good to be implicit. Uh, I think another column will be the email, which this one should be unique. So if you pass unique through to the object, this will create an index that make, make sure that this is a unique value. And nullable will be false. Now I'll define a column called type. This, this is um, the type of the user, so a normal user or admin. You can call it also a role. So I will define a type for that. So we might want to reference that from other places. So export type user type will be equal to admin or a user. And this is the type for that. And type for M is smart enough I, to make this as a var card. I think the default is varkar when they don't know how to do things, I believe. So, but yeah, you can say it's smart enough to know that this the type of this is a varkar or a string, and the default would be user. Uh, but I think a better approach uh, for these kind of things, for the role of the user, for example, is to define them as enum. Don't define them as a string like this, or uh, zero, one, two, three, like numbers because it's not readable and I hate now passing this user type everywhere uh, I think a good approach is to use enums so enum user type would be equal to user like this and how you can use that inside type or m is like this let me just copy this to save some time So this would be like this. So a column default will be a value from the enum, which is user type to the user. And the, you need to pass the enum itself. So this is the enum for that. And the type is enum. And also the type for the property is referencing the same enum. And enums, by the way, they are, you don't need to pass the equal um, then string. You can just put it like this. But this will make it uh, zero as the user and admin is one. This is how they will be represented in the database as zero and one. To force it to be strings, you can just put like put it like this. Um, so yeah, enums are more readable and they exist in the database, so you should use it. I did not use it here because I'm using SQLite. Uh, in my SQL and Postgres, it will work. I will put an example in the, as a comment here. So. You can, there is a repo for this code, by the way. So yeah, for type, uh, use enum like this. Okay. Um, I think this is the basic, the basics maybe of type or M. How you the basics regarding the entities, of course, not everything. So another thing that created and updated at. Uh, so these things are common practice in the database to add them for everything almost, just to know when this was created and when this was updated. And I will do. I will put these inside all our entities. So I will do them one place and then extend uh, that class, uh, which will hold these entities with these properties for each entity. I will show you how we can do this uh, right now, since it's really not that hard. So I will create a file called shared properties dot entity dot TypeScript, and I will import two. Um, Decorators from type ORM. One is called uh, the updated update date column, and the second one is called create date column. These will handle the create and update add 
uh, logic for us, which is nice. Now let's export a class. And I won't decorate this class. I will just leave it as a normal class that holds uh, properties that have been decorated these, with these two. And when you extend this class in the user's class, these two columns will be added there and for any other entity. So uh, created at brief time date. And let's decorate this with the create date column. And this accepts an option. So the first one is the default. So this is a callback function. I will return the current type stamp, which is a reserved word in SQLite. I think in Postgres and SQLite and MySQL, it's the same thing. So the first time you created this column, this is the default value. And this is the current type stamp from the database server on your server. So just keep this in mind if you are building uh, an application will be used from different kind of places. Yeah, to handle the time zones. So type date time and the name. I so this is the this is what the name will be, and I want it to be like this. So name I created at. I'm using prettier by the way. This is why the for the code got formatted like this. And now the update date column. So updated at so the default would be I think it's the same thing. Let's just let me just copy this. And this is would be updated. Um yeah and now we can just inside our users entity just extends that. So extends yeah, import it, I extend it. And this want to create our table. We need to go inside our connection and create it from here. So first thing we need to import it. And a thing I like to do when I uh, export things is the same thing I did here. So inside our entities, I'll create the index to TypeScript. And I will export from the users, uh, the users entity and the user's type for now. I won't this use I won't use this for now, but I need the user's entity. And inside our connection. I will just import from entities and that's it, which is uh, very nice. And all the entities will be imported from on the same line. Imagine if you have like uh, fifty entities. Uh, this might be a little bit more easier to import and readable. It will be like a long of lines, a long line, a long, <laughs> a long set of lines, but yeah, uh, there's a workarounds for that. If you have, if you're having that case, maybe you can import all the fifty of them. Or using the same import in a separate line, a separate file, and export them from them, from there, and import it here. And um, yeah, maybe use the spread operator to extract the, all our, all the entities. But yeah, so. For each entity we have, we need to put them inside this array of entities, like this. And now TypeRM knows about one of our entities, so each entity will be added here at the end. And it will be created when we synchronize that. So let me run it. Okay, so everything is fine. Let's go to open database. The happy.db. So here is our users table. Let's show table. Yeah, there's no data, but yeah, this is the columns. Uh, these when these when this shape is empty or hollow, uh, this means that this is nullable. Else means. Uh, it does not. It does not accept null. And as you can see, everything is varchar except of the ID, which is integer auto incremented. And if you hover over it, you, see, you will see that this is a primary key. And the date time, it's a date, and the birth of date is a date time. And remember, we did not put uh, a type here. This is how uh, you can say smart type RM is. 
maybe you can put this as date. I mean, no one would. I think no one knows the the time that they will be paired, or no one remembers that. So now refresh. Yeah, it's now dead, which is better. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, also the created and updated that. Yeah, I think that's it. This is getting long, so thank you.